Thanks for tuning back into the channel this week and as I mentioned in the last video what we're going to be doing this week is looking at ICM photography on the iPhone. ICM if you follow this channel you know is one of my favourite styles of photography and it's where you're capturing moments through intentional and deliberate motion and it gives you a kind of painterly effect to the images and sometimes quite abstract imagery that is it's up to you how you interpret that imagery and personally I really really enjoy it and I know a lot of other people do as well it is a far step away from sharp focus intentional images so it's, it's fun to do and it's, it's quite liberating as well I've just moved very recently to the iPhone and it's iPhone 15 Pro Max I had the Google Pixel 6 and I've had that for a couple of years and contracts end and everything and I was looking for a better camera and I'd read all the reviews and there was a lot of people saying that if you move from the 14 up to the 15 in the iPhone not much of a difference but coming across from an Android phone uh, in this case the Google Pixel 6 to the iPhone 15 Pro you will notice a world of difference and I'll be honest I have uh, would I say it's a complete world of difference? No, but I've noticed a great difference. One of the big differences that I've noticed with this is the app that I now use for my photography on the iPhone. Now, I've only had it a couple of weeks. I downloaded this app day one, I think it was, because I noticed that Glenn Dewis was using it for a lot of his iPhone images. And it's the Reflex Pro Camera app. Now they've got two other apps as well. They have got Reexpose and Reheld. And I've downloaded all three now and they're absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to recommend straight away if you like manual photography on your iPhone, definitely download these apps. I'll put links below to them as well. When I first started using the app, I was just taking normal photographs with it just to get used to it because it's got completely manual controls. And then I, th I wondered, because of the completely manual controls, does it allow you to do ICM? And yes, it does. All three of them allow you to do ICM and they've all got different results. One of them gives you the nice fluid motion when you're doing your ICM. Another one of the apps tends to stitch the images on top of each other, which then it looks like multiple exposure. And it's got some really, really crazy effects with it as well. So. It's really, really interesting and I'm enjoying it, as you can probably tell, so much doing this. Now, I'm going to do a couple of other videos just on the separate apps themselves. I just thought I would throw one in about ICM and how easy it is thanks to the Reflex app. It's worth experimenting in different situations like in the house or when you're on location and it's just different objects will give you different images. You'll get points where the images to you just don't work. Maybe there's too much form, maybe there's too much uh, stutter in the image itself. And it's just a case of trying and trying. Like some of the building shots don't work, but I now have an idea of the type of thing that I want to go for, like this image here and the following image. I felt both of them worked. And that's what I'm heading for now. Some of the images that you create may produce a painterly effect or the fluidity of motion to produce mesmerising images. They're still recognisable in their form. But it's the found beauty and the interplay of the movement, the light and form, the spontaneity and creativity that allows you to break free from the traditional constraints and explore a world where reality merges with abstraction. It's fun to try and it may release you from your photographic constraints and visions and might inspire more. I would definitely give it a go. Hopefully that's whetted your appetite for the rest of the videos that I will be producing in the next few weeks or so using the app and I'll go back out in location and I'll just do some landscape photography with it and we'll look at other things perhaps as well with 
product photography. Now, it doesn't mean I'm moving away from an actual camera. It's just, it's good now to be able to go out, even if I don't take my camera, which I normally do, but even if I don't take my camera, and I've got the choice now to shoot, whether that's ICM, landscape, whatever I want, thanks to this app, or thanks to these apps, which I am really, really enamoured with, as if you probably couldn't tell. Hopefully you get something from that, and as I say, hopefully it whetted your appetite for the apps themselves. I'll put the links below, and you can go and try them. Thanks again for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.